he speaks about this word that was in the beginning with God and was God. And he said that this word, it was through this word that everything that we see was created. That there was not anything. There's not anything in this in this world. You're a real Christian. You have a mask. On. No, I am a Christian. Well, if you'd like to talk, I could put a mask on, sir. <laughs> or are you just here to complain? I'm a Christian. I'm born again. Okay. All right. So then, start manifesting the fruit. Then, Amen. the fruit of the spirit. If you want to talk, I could put the mask on. God bless you. God bless you. You know, we're living in these times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch up my message. We're living in these times that yeah, you gotta put a mask on to go on the bus, and you gotta put your mask on to go into the store. You know, the vaccine is here. They're talking about getting a vaccine, and if you don't get the vaccine, you're not gonna be able to do certain things. They're already talking about that. Well, the Bible says that these days would come, and these are all signs of the times that we're living in. The Bible even says that there's going to be a time where this man rises to power, calls him the beast. That he's going to cause everybody to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead or they won't be able to buy or sell. These times are coming. Because we're living in the last days. We're living in the days before the second coming of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was the Son of God that came to suffer and die for our sins. The, the perfect Son of God, the, the perfect Lamb of God that would come to die for our sins so that we could be forgiven and after he died he was buried and on the third day he rose again to victory and he is seated at the right hand of God the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life that God sent his son into this world not to condemn the world but that through him the world might be saved and as he came 2,021 years ago, that's why it's the year 2021, he's coming again. And the Bible describes the days in which we're living in. Things that are happening in the world right now are fulfilling prophecy. Just, this, just the fact that Israel is a nation again. You know, in 1948, I believe it is, na uh, Israel became a nation again. After ceasing to exist for almost 2,000 years, just the fact that Israel is there shows the prophecy is being fulfilled. And what it comes down to is when we stand before the Lord, when He comes back to us or when He takes us home to go and stand in front of Him, we want to make sure we're on the right side of Him. You know, the door is open to receive that gift of salvation. It's by grace through faith that we can be saved. It's, it's, it's a gift of God. It's not of works that any man might boast. We can't do enough good deeds, good works to get right with God. It's by the grace of God that's been made available to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon His name and there's salvation. If you confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. Salvation is available and open to each one of us. But it means that we come to believe Jesus Christ as Lord and we repent. And that's the big one. I was a Christian my whole life, but unrepentant. And repentance means that I've had a change of mind which leads to a change of direction. I've changed my mind about my sin. I've changed my mind about my condition before God. I've changed my mind about a lot of things. And now I'm putting Jesus Christ in charge of my life. That's what it means when He's Lord. If He is Lord, that means He's in charge. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to be perfect but we're submitting to Him. That I'm not any longer going my own way. I'm trusting in Him. And when we do this, when we trust in Him, when we believe in Him, He will be faithful to get us to where we want to go. Because at the end of this life, it's heaven or hell. One or the other. Hell is a place of punishment. It's a place of torment. Jesus People don't realize it. Jesus warned and spoke about hell more than anybody else in the scripture. He says it's a place where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a place where the worm never dies, the fire is never quenched. It's not anywhere that any single person here that hears my voice right now wants to go to. And I don't want to go there either. But unfortunately, it's where our sin will take us. But Jesus Christ, he paid the penalty in full that not a single soul has to go there. 
on the cross, when Jesus died, he cried out, it is finished. He's done everything to reconcile us back to the Father. Where our sin had separated us from God, he made the payment in full. As we trust in him, the debt is paid. The wages for sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says you shall be saved. And we want to make sure that we're trusting in Him, because heaven and eternal life does not start after we die. Eternal life starts the moment we put our trust in Christ. We receive the Holy Spirit. This is God's seal that tells us we're on the way to the kingdom of God. And that kingdom that's available to each one of us, by grace, through faith, sorry, God bless you, it is open to us right here, right now. My eternal life started October 5th, 2014, the moment I said finally, Lord, let your will be done. And I have eternal life. I'm not afraid of anything anymore. I used to pretend I wasn't afraid of anything, but now I'm truly not afraid of anything except for God. Because the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So when we fear God, when we reverence God, when we put Him in the right place, then everything else is taken care of. We don't have to worry about anything else. And this is why the Bible says that God has not given a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And Jesus said, My peace I give you. Not like the world gives, I give unto you. Don't let your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. He gives us peace in the midst of pandemic, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of whatever it might be. He can give us peace, not because of our circumstances, but even despite our circumstances. Because God is sovereign and in control. So when we trust in Him, we can truly have peace. We can truly have joy. You know, when we start looking at what's happening in the world and think, you know, what's the way out of this mess? The answer is not found here. It's found beyond what we see with our eyes or can, can understand even with our minds sometimes. You know, there's a, there's a greater realm. There's a spiritual realm that there's a war happening right now. There's a war in the spiritual realm, and I'm sure that many of us can sense it. Many of us can feel it. And it's a war of our souls. And God is fighting. He's fighting because He wants us on the right side of eternity. But it takes a choice. It, it, it demands a choice. We receive Jesus Christ as Lord, and we receive the kingdom of heaven through Him. But if we reject Him, He will reject us. So I pray that you would know Him. I pray that you would just put your trust in Him. You don't have to listen to me. When you go home tonight, just call upon His name in faith and see how He answers you. This is not about coming to church. This is not about you following a religious checklist. Come into a relationship with the one true and the living God through His Son, Jesus Christ, who He sent. You don't need me to do that. Pick up a Bible, start reading it. Just allow God to speak to you, pray, and you speak to Him. And He will be your peace. He will be your joy. He, he will be your victory. He will give you everything that you need in the life that now is and everlasting life in the life to come. God doesn't promise to take all of our problems away, but He promises to give us everything that we need in the midst of it. In fact, Jesus said these words. He said, In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. God bless you. And, and this, is, this, is, this is what it's about. We are overcomers in Christ. And if you're a believer right now, you have something inside of you that you need to share with others because the Bible says, always be ready you know, to, to, to give people the reason for the hope that you have within you. Because there's a lot of people walking around hopeless these days. And that hope is Christ, because He's coming again. Amen. And when He comes, people don't realize heaven is not just in the clouds. When He comes, He brings the, the, the kingdom of God to the earth. What we see happening right now is the kingdom of man is coming to an end. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel, because Jesus Christ, He will come to rule this world for a thousand year millennial reign. That's what the Bible says. And Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. As surely as it is written, as surely as it is spoken, it will come to pass. So pick up a Bible if you don't have one. This is a list of God's promises to us. And we can be on the right side or the wrong side of those promises, so we want to make sure we're on the right side. So trust in Him. If you need a Bible, I think i got a couple left, and I don't want anything for them. I just want somebody to read them. And if you need a track, take one. If you need any prayer, got any questions... And yes, if you don't want to have a conversation, I will put my mask on for you. God bless you. You know your work, brother. God bless you. I gave my heart to the Lord when I was 15 years old. Amen, amen. And I'm 16. And have you received the Holy Spirit? I baptized the Holy Spirit.
speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Wonderful. I'll walk through, and I'll walk through the water. Oh, that's great. That's some new land we had walking us off. Yeah. yeah. What's your name? I lived under the church pew from the time I was a baby. Really? Born in a Pentecostal family. Oh, okay. What's your name? Uh, Keith. Keith? Nice to meet you, Keith. Carmen. Carmen, nice to meet you. Sorry do I react. I just, no, no problem, no problem. I'm a nurse no and I just sometimes... No uh, no, you know what? I, I, I understand. All the information you, you've been receiving. That's why you the know your word. <laughs> but you the grace of God. And, and I understand, you know, it's just uh, everybody's got different feelings. When I'm preaching, I usually try to stay away. But I keep, but if that, somebody else have a conversation, I'll put the yeah. mask on and, uh, you know, respect, respect everybody's feelings. I went feelings. to Peterborough for yeah. four years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, God bless you, Keith. God bless you. And I became a, from a youth pastor to a nurse. <laughs> okay. All right. So you were, you were working in the church before? Yeah. Okay. 20 right. years in the Well, you know I'm what? Pastor. Wherever you're working, that's that's a ministry in itself, yeah. I'm sure. Trendy. <laughs> Trendy <laughs> Pentecostal. Yeah, 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 yeah. All my family yeah. born again. And praise the Lord with son and daughters. Amen. Amen. Can I pray for you for anything? Can I pray for you for anything? Uh, actually, I'd rather pray for my co-workers than I'd see you. Okay. Just we need prayer every day. All right, I'll just, I'll just lift up a prayer right now, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for Keith, Lord. I thank you for just um, the work that you've given him, Lord. And I pray for everybody that's there in the ICU. I pray you be with them. I pray you protect them. And Lord, I pray you help keep the salt and light right in your place. And Lord, thank you for this conversation. Thank you for uh, reconciliation, Lord, not only to yourself, but also to each other, Lord. And uh, Lord, I pray you bless Keith. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you, man. God bless you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.